Right, in this video, we are starting a brand new module called Module 2, and it is to do with uh, direct current machines, and this makes up 20% of the curriculum. Now, in this video, I'm just going to look at the construction of DC machines. Now, although there's no calculations in this video, understanding the construction of the machine does help us a lot when we get to the calculations. So I thought I would go into detail and just show you the construction of a machine. Interestingly, the construction of a motor and the construction of a generator is exactly the same. So this is unit 2.1 for DC machines. Here we've got a two-pole DC machine. The first part is the yoke, which is the outer frame, and that is used to protect the inner parts. We have the field pole used to strengthen the magnetic field. The field coils, which produce the magnetic flux when they carry current. And then we have the pole shoe, which helps to distribute the flux over the air gap. And then we have the armature, which is the rotating part of the machine. So just to show you each of those parts individually. So the main frame is the outer frame used to protect the inner parts. The terminal box is on top of the main frame. That's, this is where the electrical connections are. The field pole is used to hold the field windings in place and it also helps to strengthen the magnetic field. And in this diagram, we have a four pole machine. The field coils is the stationary part of the machine and that helps to produce the magnetic flux when current passes through the coils. The uh, pole shoe bolted onto the field pole that helps to distribute the flux over the air gap. And you can see the pole shoe is made of laminated steel sheets to reduce the effects of eddy current. The air gap is the space between the rotating part and the stationary part. And just a quick little demonstration of how our commutator rotates and cuts through the lines of flux for a DC system. So for the rotating part of the machine, we have the uh, armature assembly, and the armature assembly has certain parts, and we need to know the main function of each part. So we have the armature core made of thin slices of laminated steel sheets to reduce the effects of eddy current, and their function is to hold the field windings in place. The main function of the armature core is to produce torque. The commutator allows for electrical connection and allows for a current to flow from the armature and also converts AC to DC. Mica is used to insulate the segments of the commutator. It is known for being a good insulating material and can withstand high temperature. The segments of the commutator are wedge shaped to prevent the segments from moving out of position due to centrifugal force. There are two types of bearings. We get roller bearings and uh, ball bearings, and their main function is to prevent friction. Brushes. Uh, th these uh, common brushes are carbon brushes. You can see when they're brand new, they have a square face, which needs to be shaped. Um, the reason why manufacturers like to choose carbon is because carbon is cheap, hard wearing, it can withstand high temperature, and the dust acts as a lubricant. So there you go, there's the construction of the rotating system and the construction of the stationary field system. Now there are two types of windings inside our armature assembly. Your machine could either be lap wound or it could be wave wound. If it is lap wound, it is used for uh, low voltage, high current applications. And you can see in our illustration, the segments are close together. If it's wave wound, it is used for high voltage, low current applications. And you can see in the illustration that the segments are far apart for the electrical connections. Right, what I've done is I've gone, I've gone over activity 2.1. So if you want, you can just push pause and uh, you can try activity 2.1 on your own. It's on page 106. And what I've done is I've put the answers here for you so you can check your answers afterwards. So the function of a motor is to convert electrical power into mechanical power. The function of a generator is to convert mechanical power into electrical power. And there is no difference in the construction of a motor and a generator. In question three, we have a two-pole DC machine, which is fully labeled. In 4.1, 
The frame is used to provide mechanical protection and forms the outer frame. The field pole strengthens the magnetic field and holds the field windings in place. 4.3, the commutator allows for electrical connection. It converts AC to DC and allows current to flow. In 4.4, the brushes are used to make electrical connection and allows current to flow. And then in 4.5, it is used to support the bearings and shaft. And then in question 5, the different types of brushes, we get carbon, graphite, electrographite, and copper graphite. In question 6, the type of windings you find in DC machines are lap winding and wave winding. In question 7, the term bedded means bedding of brushes to shape the new brush from the square to the shape of the commutator surface. Question eight, we get two types of bearings, ball and roller bearings. In question nine is the drive end and shield. And uh, why do manufacturers like to use carbon? In question 10, carbon is hard wearing, cheap, and the dust acts as a lubricant. The difference in the construction for wave winding and for lap winding in question 11, for wave winding, the segments are far apart, and for lap winding, the segments are close together. In question 12.1, in terms of the application, lap winding is used for low voltage and high current application. And in question 12.2, wave winding is used for high voltage and low current applications. All right, that's the end for the first section of DC machines.